We're all pretty tired, having just finished the TT2000 in Milton, and uh, we headed up to uh, Christchurch uh, to stay uh, for the night there. I'm on the cafe right now, and <laughs> with Glenn and Marty, <laughs> and this absolutely fantastic pie. Check this out. This is the mutton one. What's the name of this place, Marty? Again? Mutton pies. Oh yeah, what's the name of the um The Gonda Tea Rooms. Oh no, they called it something pie. Mitchell Pie, Mitchell Mutton or something. McDougal. McDougal? Yeah, I think Ewan McGregor designed it, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, this is around the world pie. Check it out. Because <laughs> it, it has got hints it's of like a Yorkshire pie, pie, isn't it? Mm. Meat from every continent. With a pastry. I think I think we need to put pie. You need it. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> Mm. Did you clean your teeth? Pastry. Mm -hmm. So coming up to Makiki, and I have to tell you the funniest story uh, at the garage on the left there when I was growing up. I had the old A40 uh, in there for some repairs. A local uh, cocky comes in on, a, on like a harvester and... Um, and the harvester was on fire as it came into the gas station. And uh, the guy on it didn't realise. And the, uh, the garage proprietor was going, no, no, get out, get out, get out. And the guy didn't know what he was talking about and was jumping off it. <laughs> and there was some hay on it that was, that was on fire at the time. Testing one, two, one, two. Did you copy over? Warning riders, we're pulling out of the Metropolitan Motel, what a place. When we arrived, he uh, provided three beers and, um, and then another three beers. DB Draft, we felt like we kind of earned it. We're heading towards Kaiapoi. The target for today is, well for me anyway, I've picked in the guys Heading back to Blenheim and Renwick, and uh, we're going to take in a few sites on the way. We were originally going to look to come back via the Rainbow, uh, but we're just going to take it easy, actually. Last time when I came back, and I think it was pre um, Glenn getting the Super Tenere, so Marty and I went through the Molesworth. This was a few years ago, actually, it's when I had the BMW, and um, went through the Molesworth, but I had to rush it so much. And I only made the ferry with sort of sort of minutes to spare. And whilst it was epic, we don't want to be doing that again today. So we're going to be a bit sensible. There's plenty of other stuff to do. So I think for the Rainbow and uh, the Molesworth again, we're prepared to go and do the Molesworth again and, and put the tent up. The most ideal thing to do would be to take a couple of days so you can only go in. You can actually take a few moments to enjoy being in it. Right, like, go, 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 go. I've got to get going. I haven't got time to eat. I haven't got time to drink. Let's just go. And, um, yep, so the uh, the extreme tourism is a bit of a slowdown for uh, when we finally do it. Marty and Glenn have done Rainbow and, um, and, and the Molesworth plenty of times. It's in their backyard. I think Marty probably did the Molesworth as just a bit of a warm-up for the TT as well down to Moto Mox. Just for a wee look, this is where I got my um, riding gear from my climb Carlsbad a few years ago. Going from Moto Mox, finally gave us uh, some local intel, um, helping us uh, with the route from Colverdon across to Cheviot that Marty had been thinking about but wasn't sure if our big bikes would be suitable for, but turned out to be a fantastic recommendation. Thanks Paul. To Waikari, we can pass railway back behind us. We're into Colverton. Reading to Colverton. Can we get it into the tank without spilling it everywhere? Oh, bloody hell. Oh, no, I suppose it did. Did, did it did go in? Or is that sort of in there, mate. Is that just sort of leaked down? Of course, let's hope that no one. Um, 
borrowed this from one of the overnights at the motel and just sort of peed in it. That'll do. <laughs> Success. But look, there's, there's fuel everywhere. You can't get away from bloody tipping fuel in, in a tidy way, can you? So we're heading out of Colverton towards Cheviot. I think really just across that range there. I think about 50 k's or thereabouts in total across the Cheviot. Here we go. So what's it called? Kaiwara Homestead Road. Cool. Well, I can tell you now, if the gravel is this sort of gravel, that's the sort of gravel that we like. Because honestly, no problem doing that. And mucking about a bit. If I stay at the back here, we're gonna see a lot of dust. Dust. Awesome. Oh, we've got a gate. Open the gate for us, Marty, will ya? Magnificent view back, you can see it. Beautiful, isn't it? How about that? I suppose it's a benefit of eating dust is that uh, you last the gate. Hello sheep. Eating the bloody sheep dust now. Follow you fellas. You can smell the sheep from here. Check out the coastline. Any seals today? Yep. There's seals out there. I'll be keen to eat something. But uh, I'll eat whatever style you fellas want. Kaikoura coastline is looking stunning today as it always does. South Island has delivered an enormous amount of scenery over the last few days. And if that would stop a 10 ton boulder from landing on your head, not even the roof of that Nissan Pajero would save you. You can't beat this little view coming down into Kaikoura. Right, you ready? You got the side stand down? Don't worry, mate. It's okay. It is beautiful coming down here towards Blenheim. Busy times for Marty too because uh, his transport involves helping the vineyards. Well, we're pulling into Blenheim, and uh, no, the Glen's going to be turning off shortly. Greetings, Blenheim. There's Glenn. Awesome, mate. Big rig. Well, we're just getting uh, ready to get off the ferry, so I got the early boat out of uh, Picton. Sort of 5.30, 6.30 check-in, 7.30 a.m. sail. What is it? It's uh, about quarter past 11. 20 past 11, so about 20 minutes late landing, and heading back to Auckland. Rolling thunder at our left, uh, Road King. Just take a bit of pie in Waiuru. Too good. Yeah. 
Okie dokie riders. Well, getting back on the motorway after the little sticky espresso at the Bombay BP. It's basically been almost a week. I left on Wednesday at uh, about 2.30 after a meeting, checking the tyre pressure. And uh, it'll have been about 4,000... 350 k's, maybe 4,400 k's, and uh, it's been a bloody good trip. The TT itself was about 2,240 of those, the rest was getting down there, coming back, and a little bit of uh, riding about. What a mission! I'm going to be jolly pleased to get home. Tomorrow actually is mine and my lovely wife's. Uh, wedding anniversary, the 20th wedding anniversary, so it's been good to uh, to get home and uh, obviously in one piece. Everything has gone very well, if there's only one complaint, and there is only one complaint, that is I've got such a sore ass. my god, and uh, it took a while to come on at this time, but Today has been quite tough actually, I've definitely been uh, feeling it and um, had to stop a couple of times, stretch out, stand up at every opportunity on the road and um, I think if I was just doing the TT itself, I don't think I'd uh, worry about it, but it's that extra sort of couple of thousand kilometres. That, um, that just nails you. This screen that I've got um, is, is way better than the one I had last time. The one I had last time, jury rigged the last one I had, um, and uh, it was a larger screen. I think it was a Yamaha screen, and um, had the extension on top. And it was better than the original stock one, but um, not as good as this. This one got put on after the Uber hit me and um, it damaged the screen. And it's a jimmy one and it's just a bit wider, a bit taller and it's got sort of a lip at the top so I don't need the screen ex extension or anything. I can pretty much ride. Eyes are open and uh, it gets the wind right off your shoulders. The helmet you can ride pretty much all day fatigue free with it. Makes a big a big difference. I still haven't replaced my tank bag, that's sort of fallen to bits. I really just don't want to shell out four hundred dollars. Um, and uh, I prefer to actually put that into the lights. So those new PIAA or PIA lights that I put on uh, are absolute weapons. So pleased I did that because that really um, stepped the illumination up a huge no number of notches and also provided quite a bit of variety in terms of what I was doing with lights sort of late at night or early in the morning. Miraculously, I don't know, it's like that moment in Pulp Fiction when um, the guy, I can't remember his name, you know, doesn't get shot but there's bullet holes behind him. I don't know how that left one didn't get knocked off in the river crossing because the crash bars have got a good scratch on them and they're kind of inside of where the outside of that light is so there must have been quite a big rock that the crash bar landed on and then obviously back panty I landed on a rock as well so that must have held the bike up enough that the lights uh, on that side didn't get, get um, smashed and uh, so that was that was very lucky. Don't know there's much else to say, apart from bloody good. You pleased to get home? We got 36 k, 34 minutes, and um, yeah, we'll be there. Oh yeah, again, it was just so good catching up with people. Obviously, Marty and Glenn. We had our great times as always. It has been quite a long day today because it's just really getting on State Highway One and just churning out the mile and uh i pleased to pretty much be there anyway i hope you are well for still get the tt 
g'day again, and <laughs> thanks. And if I didn't see you there, uh, sorry I missed you. Um, and um, if you're not in the TT at all, you're just interested, thank you for uh, for watching. That's awesome. Much appreciated. And please, anyone, um, put something in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. And, um, yeah, hope you're well. Boxing on, riding, whatever the case may be. Later.